gotta so, lay down. Hold on. She's meditating, guys. It's kind of like um the sage, you know? We have to, like, ground. Yeah. It's so scary because we're the only two on this freaking call. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, my God. They're listening. <laughs> ah, stop. <laughs> um, I, like, <laughs> what do we do? Hey, Josh. There's, like, totally no pressure, but, um... Yeah, like, if you wanted to come on the podcast, I guess we'd have you. <laughs> Never mind! Woo! The first conversation that I had, my manager, like, my manager is like, yeah, it's weird, like, everyone's breaking up right now. And then I just like, oh. by the way, guys, I'm single, in case you were wondering. I told William Craver that I'm single, and he said, now, at least you're, like, able to now find your endgame person. Welcome back to the Internet is Dead podcast. I, 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 I don't know what should we talk about. This is kind of like the sage of the podcast. You know, we're, like, coming in and saging it before we go any further for every <laughs> <laughs> Everyone keeps trying to take control of the pod. Whenever we have people on, they try to take control of the pod. And it's okay because we want them to. But it's like nobody even knows what's going on inside our heads. <laughs> so maybe we could introduce ourselves or something. Yeah. Okay. yeah I'm Brittany. Your turn. <laughs> hey, I'm Samira. Me yeah. and I met um, our freshman year of college, but we didn't become friends until our sophomore year of college. We were both computer science girls at Temple University in Philadelphia. Well, we kind of sort of became like close friends because there were two guys in our class and we wanted to be friends. No, we met at a hackathon where all the girls who code sleep over. It was at University of Maryland and we all slept over and everyone smelled really bad. And I bought Brittany bubble tea. Yeah. And then we talked about like the wallows. <laughs> yeah, because Brittany had like a wallows and a Declan McKenna, McKenna sticker on her laptop. And I was like, oh my you know the phase of everyone having those like red bubble like white outline stickers on their laptop that was what I had on there yeah. and like one of those like bubble gum pink like uh cases and then we were in a class together and I was like when we ended up in a class together I was like you know and I was like god now I'm gonna have to talk to her yeah and I didn't like but Brittany because I thought she was mean everyone thinks so just because she was hanging out with mean people at the time I was hanging out with mean people. It was like freshman year of college. I didn't like the people I was hanging out with. I just like didn't know how to find other people, you know? Yeah, it was like a bad time. But also I was friends with Mitch, who hopefully will one day be a guest on the pod because Mitch bonded our friendship together too. And we, we've like turned him into a girl. As, as much as we can. It's like, he's still not there yet, but it's like, we can't do anymore. Like we've done it all. The, just to explain, like he... He has a beard and stuff and he like used to be against like abortion <laughs> but like don't worry he's fine now <laughs> but anyway it's not important and then we sat in the saxby's and we talked about fifth harmony we did bond over like internet culture <laughs> i want to shake I, myself every I time can't I hear that. also what i've been realizing recently because i've been like looking for new roommates like to move in and replace like the roommates who are leaving my house and I've been realizing because I kind of like thought I was just kind of saying things at this point, like not actually like I knew it came from somewhere, but I feel like the people around us are so immersed in like the same humor as us. And so immersed in just like online things where everyone does like know things, you know, so then like talking to people who like are outside of like our circle searching for like roommates who are kind of like acquaintances or like people who I haven't talked to in a while because I just like posted it on my Instagram is really weird because I don't know I felt like a weird disconnect where I was like oh my god and that like obviously wasn't all of them I think they're all cool too it's just weird because it's like I could tell we didn't have like it wasn't like the same thing and then I realized oh that is like actually a contributing thing kind of like like going forward a little bit and like us meeting but then when we met like we met like this like really big friend group and I remember like one of like the first time hanging out with everyone on like Joe Biden day when like Joe Biden won the election and we all like celebrated and stuff and we went to one of their houses afterward and we were like standing in the backyard talking and like one of them like brought up they had like a victorious like twitter like account and it was like i think like us just being in that space with all of these people who like had i feel like that same like they just like had that sense of humor and like shared that part of the brain in a weird way i think that was like part of why we all clicked so quickly was because it was the first time at least for me it was the first time that i was around people like that i think that's but. happened with like most people we know where like, most people we know 
got to that humor somehow because it's just like now immersed in real life i think it was cultivated online and then like trickled down kind of i've been i was thinking about this and i wrote on like hold on like the idea of like men being like sparse i, I guess this is kind of off topic but it relates to what you're saying i feel like with finding guys it's like like to date it's like present too i think if a guy does something like that it's like oh my god wait he was online like and he knows about stan twitter right. and it's like yeah. crazy and even if like someone just makes jokes my ex would like make jokes about like ariana grande and like emma chamberlain and like he knew those things and it makes me mad because it's like almost like this like i don't know people have used it to be evil yeah i feel like now like i don't trust any guy that like like any like straight guy that was on, like knows about it because I feel like they're just using it to be evil and by like, evil like, like get girls and pose as something they're not obviously isn't true like guys can um, enjoy that stuff but like I just need to hop in and say what I was actually trying to say because I literally could not like put it into words but I was trying to explain that it's kind of unfair that for some reason men get this special aura around them for being online or knowing something about Emma Chamberlain when they're doing the same thing that we're all doing but for them it's like special because not a lot of guys know that it makes them somehow better than the rest and I think that they've realized that or at least some of them do and use it as an advantage um and it sucks because I think that's present in a lot of different things. I think that men are often praised for things that are bare minimum and that's not a new concept, but yeah, yeah that's what I was trying to explain. I'm trying to find the notes app and it just says, I was so mad at my mom because I didn't get to go to TanaCon. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm also like really insane right now because I was sitting in a room without windows like all day. Like, cause I have my no. first day of work. I just got a job at a digital marketing company. How was your day? good I work I do like data engineering like coding oh. mm, yeah. so um, sorry so we met like we talked about fifth harmony and Saxby's you know it was all good we had like a comp side class together and we would like sit in our lab and our lab was so fun because it was like us these um like three guys that we like became friends with and we would all just like sit in the back and like laugh and it was really really fun everyone in the class hated us like this dynamic of us like trying to befriend people <laughs> we think are cool <laughs> it like makes a lot of sense saying it's important because it's like literally yeah. how we like connected I think in the beginning and it like just has carried through with us since then do you think that when we met and we didn't initially become friends but it was kind of over like wanting to be friends with these two guys in our class I've thought about this and I'm like was that kind of just like us being <laughs> misogynistic to each other <laughs> honestly probably like I think everything there I think it's definitely inherently like a little misogynistic we had like the interest of like wanting these like guys to like us more than like the interest of wanting each other to like us never didn't think you were really cool like I don't know why it's like so much more I think that's like a really natural thing for yeah. like young girls seeking out like male validation obviously it's just like funny because I think that showed me like when we both wanted to do that I was like oh we're similar also like yeah. obviously like everything about like connecting like with like the internet and like you know, growing yeah. up, like, it was kind of just like there. But also growing up on the internet shapes how you interact with people in real life because you idealize them. Same thing with guys, like you idealize them and you're like, I want to get to like this point of being friends with them. Because when we like met, and like did all that we were like 19 I think like when we like became friends with them like I think that's just like normal for people at like 19 to do and also people in high school and stuff like girls to do mm -hmm. is just like want like guys to like you really bad and think that you're really funny and it like doesn't even matter if like, like there's a really cool girl and I think that it's something you just have to like honestly grow out of and maybe some people just like don't even like some people are just like smart and don't even go through it but like I feel like a lot of people do and then it's just something that you kind of almost age out of and then you like are at the point where you're like I literally like don't even care because you just don't have the energy to even care about like the guys anymore I feel like even though I've like grown out of it in the same way like I notice it sometimes like when Holland and Cash were like Britney's the bit yeah <laughs> I was like oh I don't Bit, you know it no. genuinely like made me be like yeah the guys think I'm funny <laughs> yeah but no, also I think I, that had to do with like them being like really good friends with like my ex. I feel like I definitely do still have it too. And I think it also, there's a lot of different things it can root from, but I do think that there's a connection to like not having like any male validation or attention when you're like a teenager. And then like now like wanting it really bad because I never like had, like I never dated anyone 
throughout middle school or high school or like had any guy like me I have such good like girlfriends and like such like good friends but it's like they could say like the sweetest things to me and say that I'm like really pretty and really funny and whatever and it like won't connect in the same way if some guy that I don't even really care about says that to me and then it's like whoa like you think I'm pretty like you think I'm funny and I think it's hearing it from so many girls but not hearing it from so many guys it's really just like like the male like gaze so much of everything we do has misogyny rooted in it all we can do is just like be aware of it and try our best to like unwork it I think it's also interesting not to shift it into like relationships and breakups and stuff but obviously it's gonna be like you know <laughs> in my brain because of what's happening yeah right now. she's going through a breakup but I definitely have that fear and maybe it's also just I don't know from experience of something similar happening there's I think a constant theme of like a girl being with a guy and caring a lot more about making it work because there's like negative repercussions to a guy or breaking up with you maybe it also just has to do with like that kind of like insecure feeling of I was like valuable because like this person was dating me and now they're not dating me so now I'm like losing that value and also now I'm like this, like this girl who this person dated and it like takes you even like lower you're just that person's ex you can feel how people's demeanors entirely shift towards you I feel like people perceive me in a weird way when that happens and I start expressing things because they're like and she's writing about like her ex and people don't like share that stuff as openly mm. it's the Taylor Swift effect it is like oh, it's man. crazy because it's just been around like forever you know like that's why she got so much hate at least like in the early like when she was like back in like 2012 whatever like that was why she got so much hate was because people were mad that she was writing about relationships that she had been in. But that's the most natural thing to do if you are in a relationship and then you guys break up. Obviously, you're going to express yourself like for her. That was just writing music. Mm. And it was crazy how like the media painted her out to be. I don't know. I think guys have this thing where they won't they won't talk about things as easily. So I noticed with like a lot of guy friends who like were friends with both of us. It's hard for them to, even though something was blatantly like wrong, like, oh, this person, like, like, I'm not tying this to anything, but I'm just saying like in general, like, oh, if this person borderline, like emotionally cheated on someone, like even then, like a guy isn't gonna like put down his other guy friend. There's just like different yeah. standards, obviously in every area for like men and women in like heteronormative relationships. Obviously there's like more than just guys and girls. I, I think that also there is kind of herd mentality with like guys and girls. When a girl goes through a breakup, I'm like, okay, what did he do? <laughs> yeah. You know? So it does kind of make sense. And I think we're all kind of feeding into it. Yeah. But I think that also just stems from being so used to men being awful. Hard to not think that. And it's hard to not jump to that. I also think that it's like valid for women. Like, yeah. I guess we're at a disadvantage. So it's like, if you're not looking at things with that lens, of, I, don't know, I think people need to give like girls the past <laughs> that goes for a lot of things like have firmly believed in my relationships that if a guy isn't like aware enough of women's issues so. like not aware of that like power imbalance and or at least be willing to learn about it and do research and like read books or read theory and obviously yeah. you're never going to understand it as a man like you're never going to live it so I think the best you can do is listen to people who have lived it and that's yeah. what I really appreciated in my first relationship we would be at a table talking about like how like we've experienced all these terrible things and he would just shut up and listen and all he like had a lot of empathy like wanted yeah. to ask questions about it that also is something that it's easier to have that empathy and like be able to do that if you've been oppressed in like some other way like whether it's like because of race or like like whatever like sexuality if you're have dealt with oppression in a different way it's like oh you understand what that's like to not to be in a minority basically I think that's so true I also think that's part of why it was like that it is really hard to find someone who will actually just like listen and be will like it's just hard to find someone who's willing to even think about changing their perspective on something I don't know how we ended up talking I know. <laughs> Sorry. But it does like connect to the internet. Yeah, everyone should read the book Men Who Hate Women. Uh the author like has got like went on like different um incel forums and Reddit threads and like posed undercover and stuff and um also just talks about like how young boys like get kind of trapped into like that manosphere world and like go down the algorithm of YouTube and into the rabbit holes of like really um just like awful like things and Did you say that in the book she was explaining that like one guy might 
go down that pathway but then has like a strong figure in their life and yeah. like gets pulled out but like some people just like don't have that uh, she was talking about how um like because she was interviewing different I think they were like 15 year old boys and like the alias that she used for the one boy was Alex and she was saying how she like asked Alex like oh have you seen like this stuff online like da -da -da, whatever like the reddit threads like the Jordan Peterson videos like whatever like all this stuff like the feminazi like all that like stuff and then he was like, yeah, but he like was like, I don't really like, it doesn't really affect me. Like, I don't know. I just like, don't really pay any attention to it because it doesn't like, I'm not like, like he didn't get sucked down into it because he, like his mom had explained to him like what feminism was already and kind of just like had given him that baseline. So he was sort of able to recognize it as being like this really radical, just like outwardly bizarre thing that it is. Cause I think a lot of boys hold on to that when they're young because they're lonely because they girls don't like them because they like don't have friends and they don't have anyone in their life to connect to like it's a form of escapism in the same way that like we were on the internet as kids and we were using it in escapism through like stan communities and standing celebrities and stuff which is also so crazy because I feel like that gets so much hate like people hate so much on teenage girls for like wanting to know where Harry Styles is and for knowing yeah like his birthday and the hospital he was born in but then there's literally like 14 year old boys who are on reddit threads and in incel forms talking about how they want to like murder women anything that girls do and like can be considered like girly it's like so so like shamed for yeah. no reason at all there's nothing inherently bad about it it's just considered cringy i also wanted to say it was interesting because we were talking to our friend the other day about those like incel communities and he was saying how when he was younger he used to watch Jordan Peterson and he like didn't know like he he like didn't know anything better and then he like a few years later was like why the hell like was I on that like how did I even find that because he was literally just a kid who didn't like know any better you're literally just like born into that when you enter the internet as a young boy or like, yeah, just in general, you're born into that. She literally was talking about in the book, like she did an experiment where she started at like watching a YouTube video just like about feminism or something like that. And then she just had autoplay on to see like where the algorithm would take her. And she was on like a private browser, like private, like whatever. And it like eventually like just led her down to like the most like complete like right wing, like fem like anti-feminism like stuff. And it's like crazy that that's like, because the algorithm like, builds off of people being shocked and shock value and getting clicks and saying the most crazy things. So I wanted to say, going back to the thing you were talking about, about girls just being shamed for liking girl things. I feel like that's also caused this resurgence of girl stuff in like the mm -hmm. past couple years, especially on social media, which has been like really awesome. I think with like people just being like, kind of like reclaiming like different like girly things and not being ashamed of it. Or like people have like said that it can be like, have negative ramifications too of it almost like taking a step back with like the whole thing of like oh like I'm just a girl like da 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 and like all that stuff oh, like, different I trends like girl hobbies and stuff yeah and, like, like the like girl lunch like girl dinner yeah. whatever like saw different takes on it online where some people were like this is reducing us other takes where it's like no we're just like saying pretty much we can do whatever we want and it doesn't have to be about being a girl and none of it has yeah. to do with being a girl like everyone's just a person like the girl who like made the tiktok i don't know if you saw this about like girl hobbies got like a lot of hate for that tiktok uh, that. but she got like a lot of like like it was like it was it's just like so crazy because there's so many people that like it and then so many people that dislike it but a lot of people liked it and then a lot of people were like basically she just like made like a list of like hobbies on like her notes app for like girls who like don't have if you're like in your 20s and you like don't have hobbies which I think is like kind of common because I feel like a lot of people don't have hobbies now other than just like going on their phone so she like made like a bunch of hobbies and stuff what kind of stuff did she write I let me look some up searches girl hobbies on on a google search that's literally what I just like found <laughs> I know. oh my god girl dinner girl math girl hobbies is this self infantilizing or just an internet thing r <laughs> slash ask feminists the thing is, I do kind of think it's funny. But I don't think it's funny when guys try to do it and joke yeah. about it. But I, it does feel like a reclaiming of being put down and instead making a joke out of being put down, being like, well, what's wrong with just like genuinely what is wrong with like doing things that are like 
cute or girly like you know what I mean like because a lot yeah. if you actually look at it a lot of the things that people joke about like oh like this is sloppy and messy or like this has like this is like no effort like and that's why it's like considered like girl whatever it's actually just like also oh god I'm so distracted by your communities on this side oh sorry, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> the intercom, Emma Chamberlain, fan theories, girl more girl. <laughs> guys, I'm like trying to find different Reddit threads to post about the podcast, and so I'm subscribing to a bunch. But what I was gonna say is just I'm I don't go on Reddit. <laughs> yeah. I'm new. I don't know. I um, do like I was like like I got like a downvote and I was really sad. Literally, the downvotes on the so mean on there. Podcast literally made me almost cry. I've never gotten a downvote before. The idea of it being infantilizing is, well, why are those things infantilizing? I feel like it's just because they're being associated with women and just as women yeah. like infantilized. And I, those things themselves, if you look at them objectively, it's like, it's just like life things. Yeah. <laughs> they're just things that exist and they're not good or bad. I don't think anything is actually good or bad. And I get yeah. that it can be like, oh, this thing is considered cringy or stupid or no effort, but I don't know. I think that people are just like really, really judgmental. There's actually nothing wrong with like any of it, of like being messy, of being clean, of like having like a bunch of like candles on your bedside table, like, you know, having like a pink room or like whatever. Yeah. Also, the thing is, is it just like doesn't affect like, I don't know. I just think that there's like bigger issues. There's just like a lot with like the internet and I feel like TikTok especially and I hate like saying TikTok but it is like crazy because it's just like informs so much of culture and like so much of what goes on like I literally saw there was an article in the New Yorker about like the rise of the traditional like wife again and that's like through because of like people on TikTok because like a lot of people like are aestheticizing like being a stay-at-home mom aestheticizing like being like a whatever and it's like and that's like fine like if that's what you want to do like well I, I didn't see that article but that's really interesting I like I'm sure you've seen like people being like like I can't believe like women like got all this like the right to vote and stuff and now I have to like go do my job and whatever when I could have just been like married to someone you know what I mean and it's it also definitely is like very like um hyper like binary like white feminism like that kind of stuff too playing into it but I don't know it's just really interesting it just reminds me of like Ben how men are very much like I I like talked about this with a therapist before because I was talking about how I felt like whenever I had a crush I had to try and get them as fast as possible because it felt like someone else was going to take them first because there's so little like guys out there who are actually you know normal and just like good people and the bare minimum like just the bare minimum and obviously this isn't a new conversation then like my therapist described it as being a hunter gather mindset and I thought that was really interesting especially because I think that relates to internet like knowledge and how much guys know about certain things that are you know coined as like being girl topics and things mm -hmm. like that I don't even know if I mean that I think I just mean that um <laughs> sorry <laughs> it's like I'm thinking about all the ways like that something I say can be perceived oh I've been having that this entire like literally everything I say I was like thinking about this recently because like literally we've like only done like a couple episodes and like we've just like posted them to YouTube like they have like not a ton of like they just like are barely like out there whatever but I was like thinking about it and I like feel so self-conscious with like the few views we do have and the few like episodes we do have out there about how like people could perceive me and stuff. And it like really has just made me re like frame like everyone I watched on YouTube as a 13 year old, like these like 13, 14, 15 year, 15 year old girls that were getting so attacked and absolutely like like berated on the internet and like snark reddits and like everything and like had hate pages for like things that they said and it's like they weren't bad people like they just were like they just like didn't know how to say what they meant to say and like I feel like it's one of those things that you really just never know until you actually are putting yourself on the internet even if it's in such a small way and then you're like whoa like I can understand on like such a micro level what these people went through and it's really scary because I definitely was very quick to like judge and criticize those people when I was like 13 14 you know and it's especially like going back to what we're talking about it's especially done to women it, it, there's so much more criticism on women 
or femme people or anyone who's just not a cis man I think I like genuinely like don't like have never really gone on reddit before like I'm being serious seeing like how many like youtubers and like girls celebrities out there have like nsfw like those like like not safe like like threads and stuff it's so disgusting and like literally like there's like sexy influencers like reddit pages like i feel like if i like have a kid if i have a girl i want to like not like i don't want her on the internet at all you know what i mean now which is yeah. so sad because like i love it and it helped me so much but it's so easy to fall into that like really scary space I've also thought about that where i'm like if I had a daughter, would I want her online? And like, I feel like at this point, it's like not, <laughs> I don't know. It's like, obviously you can't keep like a child from going online when everyone's online. It's weird because it fully isolates you from a society. Kids are so online now and it's really scary because it's even worse than when we were young. And I think we started early, but people are starting even earlier now. Also just growing up way quicker, which is really scary like seeing you know little girls who like I don't know obviously it's like cool that people can feel free to express themselves because of the internet but it's also yeah. scary that these people don't aren't really fully formed and are being influenced by all these ideas and I think it's overwhelming and like too much for a child to comprehend especially it's scary for like influencers kids because it's like yeah. they didn't do anything like these kids did nothing and they're like being obsessed over and that's really scary because they're literally just kids dude I'm like waiting for like all the documentaries that are gonna come out from these like influencer kids in like 10 years like talking about all the trauma they went through because it's like actually really fucked up and sad and like there's so much like pedophilia shit too with it like it's really really gross like I know I was saying like I wouldn't want my girl like if I had a girl to be on the internet but I also like think it's scary having like a son and having him on the internet because of all like the really like scary stuff on there that like just like promotes like these like really like anti like feminism like awful ideas and stuff but then I also am thinking about it and it's like I think that it really is just like it's like a new form of parenting that I think like hasn't been like it hasn't like no one's like done it yet because I think it's, we're going to be like the first generation to really have to do it and like figure out how to parent in a way where you can give your kid the internet and you can like keep them in culture whatever because they're going to want to be on the internet they're going to want to have social media whatever but then also like giving them such like a full life outside of that and like talking to them about important things before they learn about it on the internet, like talking about feminism, talking about like sex, talking about whatever, like before they hear about it from the internet or from whatever trend, making sure that they have like friends in real life, I think. And like, they can go outside and like touch grass and like recognize that like life is like more than their phone. Like, I think that our parents kind of had to do that, but I think that we're going to have to do it in this completely unique way. Like maybe people are talking about it, but I don't think enough people are. Like, I feel like there needs to be like so much to prepare like this next generation of kids I feel like to just be safe I mean just like more resources for parents to like to understand yeah. I mean and to be made aware of what they're getting into because I totally agree with you I think that it's something that hasn't happened yet and is probably going to happen with the like incoming generation it, oh it's so weird because I feel like my head starts tingling when I'm talking about it because it's yeah. like just weird to think about the future of that and how like when something hasn't happened yet and how that's going to play out, it could be really scary if people aren't prepared for it. And I think a lot of people already aren't prepared to be parents. There's like a whole new way that you can fuck up. <laughs> I think for kids who are being born into social media, because technically we kind of were, but in a different way because it came later. And I think that our understanding of life before social media existed is like kind of core to our understanding of, everything and it's weird yeah. to think that kids are literally not going to have that anymore and I know that's like maybe something pretty obvious but it's actually like psychotic when you think about it like nobody will know that there was like what the world was like <laughs> before there were like before there was social media and that's insane yeah. because I can't imagine growing up and not knowing like what it was like before that even though we like grew up kind of like at the beginning of it like there were still people that didn't have it like we have friends that like weren't on the internet and weren't on social media and stuff and that's just going to get more and more rare because like everyone pretty much is going to be on so social media as a kid or like everyone is going to like grow up with the internet unless you like raise your kids in sort of like a more remote kind of community which also makes me wonder if that like will make 
maybe like a I feel like there's gonna be like this resurgence which I think there already kind of is of just like living this life that's like more off the grid a traditional school I'm thinking about it is really where a lot of internet stuff comes up I feel like too and it's where you like learn a lot like if even if you're not on Instagram or TikTok or whatever like if you go to a traditional school like you're gonna know about it you're gonna know about like this trend or you're gonna feel left out or like it's a setting where there's a big community yeah in your age and having people your age is like I I think being in a setting where there's so many kids your age is like it's a weird experience because it's something that you only experience for that time in your life. Obviously you yeah. have that until college, if you choose to go to college and if you're able to go to college, like it is its own community school. Cause everyone is at the same. I was thinking about this a lot when I graduated, cause I graduated like a year earlier for like your entire life. Pretty much you're at, everyone's at the same page. Like everyone's at the same place in life. Everyone's like trying to do the same thing. They're applying to college or they're getting into college or they're taking the SATs or like whatever. Maybe like everyone's kind of in that same, like for the most part, like obviously like there's people who aren't going that traditional route, but everyone's kind of in the same place in life. And then if you go to college and you graduate college, that's like when really everyone just completely changes life paths. And like some people get married, some people have kids, some people work, some people go back to school. Like it's just crazy how different your life can be at 23 compared to someone else's life at 23. And I think that also is obviously why like there's so much like post-grad crises and like everyone freaking out and stuff because it's just that feeling of not not being on the same page as everyone else in your life for the first time. I don't know. I think if there were different methods for that, obviously it can't really be school, but if there were, I don't know, something connecting us after we graduate, we wouldn't be so afraid of life (laughs) and we wouldn't be so afraid of like leaving school. And I know some people don't even go to school because they're like homeschooled or whatever, but I don't know. I think that the loss of having all of these kids your age around you is kind of terrifying and it makes you feel like it's way harder to meet people and get social interaction and I feel like such an important thing to us as humans is just interacting with people but also at the same time like I don't know I didn't have like a good school experience I didn't like the people at my school so it it's and like like I had friends who were great but there weren't that many of them and a lot of my school I felt very like not I didn't feel involved in my school's like community or like, I think it also is like one of the like scariest times. But then you look back and you have this weird nostalgia for it. Like you do about everything. But I think that that concept of being like so afraid of leaving school is so interesting because Mm -hmm. it is such a dramatic shift that I feel like you just get thrown into And like both with like the social aspect of, oh, you're being, you're around people who are your age, around people who are on the same like page as you, but then also the academic, academic like validation part of it where you're around, like where you're in the system. Yeah. And you're in the system, like, at least for me, like that was like praise. Like I was good at school. Like that was like the one thing I was good at. And so I was being praised for being good at this system that I had figured out. Like I figured out how the system worked and I was like being praised for it. And that's like what so many people like base their worth off of or if even if they're like not good at that like if some people aren't good at school like they're gonna think that they're stupid they're gonna think that they're dumb like that's like what you base your worth off of for such a long time and then suddenly that's taken away from you and so whatever side of the pendulum you fell on whether you like prided yourself in being really smart and really good at school or whether you thought that you were stupid because you weren't good at school like which you're not stupid, but that's just like what you were taught to believe. It's like whatever side you land on, that's taken away from you. So now it's like, how do you know what your worth is as a person? That's one of the things I struggled with a lot of, okay, now that I don't have grades telling me like I'm doing good or I'm on the right path, it's like, okay, what do I have now? Like, what do I have to work? Like now that I'm not working to get into like this really good college, like what do I have to work for anymore? You have to like set those, like set up like a system in your head that- is like very specific to yourself and Mm -hmm. not everyone knows how to do that and it's also just really hard to do that and to like like know where you're what's like actually meant for you I think everyone like needs to like be easier on themselves because it's like 
nobody really knows like nobody ever really knows people just act like they know I think just be I think about this a lot too of just like being an adult and like having freedom and like having the ability to literally just do whatever you want to do when you want to do it is such like a crazy thing kind of like your pressure on you it like puts pressure on you but it also is so freeing and if you're miserable even if you're really depressed it's like okay like you like it's more you have more control over your life now than you ever had we're all like shocked now that we realize like oh like everyone like we were like under control (laughs) and like we still are but like in like a different way like shocking to come out of that and get to do what you want with your life even yeah. if it's not even totally real in a sense freedom is not really real just yeah kind of what well I've also been born into and yeah. no I do just want to say I feel like it is like definitely like also very privileged to like talk about it in that way of like oh I get to do whatever I want like now that I'm an adult because obviously a lot of adults don't have that and that's like just like having financial stability and having like literally just like knowing where like knowing that you can pay your rent next month is like such a privilege that's like it's only like if you have that privilege that you're in that mindset of like oh my life is actually my own but it it doesn't change that like when you do have it it's like definitely shocking to think that yeah you're not for your entire life having to listen to someone else because I think we're under control in different ways just through like societal conditioning and through what we think we have to do and all of these pressures placed on us in general as like while we're growing up in the way that once we're finally free we're kind of too afraid to do a lot of things that we might actually want to do and I think that's really true for even just like conditional career paths we've been so conditioned into the other direction of like being too afraid to do something kind of risky and so then a lot of people don't and then I think there's also that fear of like like just that fear of like choice like when you have too many choices you get paralyzed and you don't make anything because it's like you graduate college or whatever or you're out on your own for the first time and you're like I can literally do anything I want to do and that's such a like a scary thing to think because it's like, okay, like then what do I want to do? And suddenly you don't know what you want to do and it feels like you're just floating in this ocean you can make any choice you want, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, I got really into what you were saying and I like disappeared for a minute. <laughs> no, I know. I like saw you float away. <laughs> I went like, uh, grew wings and went like this. Um, can we just say yeah. that I just want, sorry I just want Emma Chamberlain to know that we're gonna save her yeah that's our thing we're gonna save Emma can we save that for another episode yeah we gotta talk about we have so much to talk about we got, yeah I, I we also like really didn't talk about <laughs> like talked about like women men and women when you start getting in the wormhole of talking about something yeah. it's so hard to not make it broader and broader and broader and like say what it means about life in the world and you and like everyone and I think I like can't not do that all the time but I think it's fun I like I personally enjoy it sorry if it's not um, fun yeah we won't do this in our interview with Summer McKeon yeah we'll keep it we'll talk we'll we'll be of topic we'll keep it to Dylan Jordan and the racist yep (laughs) well uh thanks for listening to the uh internet is dead podcast joshua Vaya, please be a guest on my podcast samira you said it all <laughs> i'm we'll be back with more we're gonna save emma there's a lot coming if anyone wants to um can we end it <laughs> yeah.